Welcome back to Le Pinky for episode 2 with me, Mr. Sealy P. Now, as you've already seen, um, I've done a couple of contracts, I think I've done three nil, um, using the fertilizer spreader. Something that I was so focused on the fact I've made a bit of a mistake leasing that fertilizer spreader in the last episode. Um, didn't even dawn on me, this one actually does lime as well, so that's going to work out incredibly handy. Um, what I have done, just, just move this up, more. just drop it off there a second, I'm going to pop up to the store. I've just taken on the contract, and what I think Mr. Silly P's farming services is kind of back in effect, the same as it was on Ravenport, um, in that I'm going to need to do jobs around the local area for other farmers to raise the capital to do other jobs I need to do. Now I could um, sort out, I need to sort out the header for that, um, that mower, and my field just across there, that's all grass, I could theoretically do a load of silage put the grass in my bunker silo here then go and sell that at the BGA and make some money um, on selling silage which is an option I'm going to actually I'm going to be looking at because the pigs don't need grass uh, they don't need TMR so I'm not going to need to be worrying about making TMR and things like that they're going to need straw for bedding but the rest of it is on crops so anyway I'm over to the store I've um, taken on the contract which is going to be on field 30 something which I think is over there over in that direction um, now the, the kind of contract, non-contract that I talked about in the last episode with Jeremy and Ben has escalated a little bit and it's escalated in a good way which I really really like um, and this is because um, Jeremy messaged me to ask how much everything I wanted and I said look to keep it manageable 20,000 litres of whatever you decide to do well, he came back to me and he said, um, "He said we have been busy. Ben, his six-year-old son, has done 52,000 litres of sunflowers harvested. Fantastic. His daughter, Elise, who's 10 years old, wanted to help as well. So she's harvested 21,000 litres of corn. And he has stayed up, Jeremy, and done 45,000 litres... I'm going to let this person across the road. 45,000 litres of potatoes, 85,000 litres of canola, 45,000 litres of wheat and 38,000 litres of barley. Now that is available for me whenever I want it. They're going to keep it in storage in their silos and whenever I want it I can have it. Now they are in, it's in the silo on Pure Netherlands so we aren't terribly far away, just an eight and a half hour drive. <laughs> uh, let us know how much uh, you'd like at a time. Uh, where are we? We're flexible on payment. 
It can be in any form you would like. We can trade bales, animals, or euros, etc. Which reminds me, I need to swap this to euros. Um, sincerely, Jeremy, Jeremy, Ben, and Elise. So thank you very much for that, guys. So I do have a source of crops I can tap into if I need to. Which is fantastic. That's going to be incredibly helpful. Now, as you can see by the equipment I have leased, I say leased, it's part of the, the job that I've taken on. Um, I've taken a hit of just over a thousand um, to get these bits of equipment. And as you can see, I'm going to be doing a cotton harvest. So I'm going to be bouncing around. Hopefully it will get me around the map. I'll see a bit more of the, the countryside. I'm going to take the harvester first. And what I'm going to do is the contract is on field 37. Harvesting the cotton to take to the spinnery pays quite well. There's a there was another one for oh has that just disappeared? There was a fertilising contract for just over four grand, which is gone. Ah, oh, that's a pity. Um, because one of those contracts will pay for the next load of fertiliser, and it kind of rolls on and on and on and on. So, oh, I want to be in it and turned on and that's it. right. So, uh, actually, I could probably do with finding a route. Uh, that's not really the biggest map, is it? Let's go along to here. So field 30... Oh, actually, I can just go down from here. Follow the road right then, take a right down through the forest, and it will take me alongside field 37. Marvellous! Let's get cracking, then. So if I do that without running anybody over, that would be even better. This is quite wide. This is the only downside, I'll be honest. Something I hadn't thought about is that this is a, hmm, this is a small map and I'm not sure about getting around with larger machinery. Nope, it's not going to get through there, is it? Oh, is there another route? I'm just sitting there thinking, oh, uh, maybe down the main road and come in from down by field 26, maybe. Down here, if I go down the main road, then in, is that a track there? Maybe. Okay, right, that's going to be a bit trickier. Because now I've got a back in, to where I just come out of. a person again into someone's crops marvellous now I've got to go up this lane here without killing anybody with the head with the header blimey that's trickier than I thought it was going to be so the problem I've got now then is I'm going to have to even be quite careful on what contracts I take on because the machinery it offers cotton harvesting on here is a good idea in theory but quite clearly not as straightforward as I had thought. Right, I'll give myself enough room to spin round. It turns quite tightly, which is great, but yeah, down the main drag then. Just hope no traffic comes other way. Ooh. There we go, so it's a whole different way of doing the uh farming. God these people just wander around the streets and they please let me get through here. Yeah, down the main road was the best way to go. Uh sat nav yeah uh so i need to go just keep going keep on going i sound a bit bunged up again it's just ridiculous uh hay fever today so if it's not a cold it's hay fever oh no hang on Wah. that's probably a bit excessive but i just suddenly saw that car at the last minute and there's another one coming fantastic The pinky welcomes considerate drivers. Oh yeah, there you go. Look, just down by field 27, 26, there's a track. According to the sat-nav, which we should be coming up on any minute now. As long as we don't get to a point where there are trees both sides, directly opposite each other, we should be okay. Oh, 
Oh, bumpy. That's the other thing about doing a smaller map as well, is you can show more of your kind of travelling to and from because it doesn't take as long. I know I find on some of the bigger maps, once you kind of get used to the map and, and people viewing get used to the map, and they know where you're going when you say, I'm going to go to here, I'm going to go to there. Um, it's not as much of an issue and you kind of, you skip or cut bits of journeys, but um, obviously you can't there. Right, okay, well, let's turn it on. Open it up. We'll open. Head it down. Let's go. Actually, what I will do. Let's turn the uh, map off. Because I'll make sure I can see that left hand row, which I missed already. I'll have to come back and do some of that. I was saying it might take a little while, but it'll it'll help pay the bills. I'm even considering, like I, had, I did on Ravenport, and I may well have to on here uh, alone or extending the loan just to get a couple of bits of machinery to get myself going. Like I think the uh, the milling machine, you know that cool kind of front header snow blower esque type thing, and a baler, which I don't have. Uh, I may even need to extend it out enough that I can get that silo so I can put loose in it. Or if I bail it, I can just stack the bales up. It don't, you know, that's probably a better way of doing it. It's cheaper than buying the silo straight away, isn't it? And just do it with bales, I think. Yeah, that's... Free branch. That's better, right? I think we just sit a little bit too high, don't we? Right, let's bring it right out. And then back in there we go. Nope, still doesn't like that very much. Right, cruise control on. And let's get going. So, um, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, from the responses I've got and the comments I've had. Episode 1 went down okay. And the um, Rhymer's Rally vlog that I did seems to have... Oh, these trees are driving me mad. So all I'm going to do is get the... I say get the uh, chainsaw out assuming I've got a chainsaw um, and just cut those branches off yeah my vlog uh, vlog number 8 uh, Rhymer's Rally down in Dorset Very a, a huge huge thank you to Womble Way and Womble Chick um, and Little Womblet <laughs> um, for their hospitality their generosity their, their kindness in inviting us and we had a fantastic time. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I really didn't know what to expect in so much as you go to some of these charity like tractor runs and things like that and you're never quite sure what vehicles are going to turn up and I suppose it's the same for the event organisers. Um, you do tractor rallies and tractor runs and it's whatever people turn up with. You know, you have to kind of, they book their vehicles in advance but you know, it could be all sorts of arrays of, of, of equipment. And there were some amazing vehicles, some incredible tractors. Um, and it was great. It was great to see. It was great to go around. The rally itself was fantastic. It was brilliant. Really well organised, really well run. Um, I would absolutely love to go again. And I know there are a lot of farm shows across the UK every year. And it would be great to attend as many as possible, but the problem is, you know, it's free weekends and travel and all that kind of stuff. It's being able to get to them. And, but yeah, I would like to go to that one again, definitely. Oh, this is ridiculous. Somebody did comment the other day saying to me about doing a Let's Play where you do it all in cab and how complicated and difficult would that be? And I said, I'm pretty sure Virtual Farmer has done a lot of his Let's Plays. He tries to do it as realistically like that as possible and there's loads and loads of in cab. Um, I've always kind of tried to do out of cab 
as much as possible because I like to see the scenery, the map, the vehicles from the outside. Otherwise you get that situation where one cab it then looks like another, looks like another and you don't actually get to see the vehicles which is kind of why I love playing the game as well. Um, but I said I, things like this, my depth perception in game is not great. And whilst you're in cab like this it's difficult to see overhanging branches whereas if you were in cab in real life you can adjust your head you can look and you can you know you can see overhanging stuff so it's a little bit trickier anyway that all being said yeah had a fantastic weekend loved every minute of it if you haven't seen the video it's over on my channel it's under vlogs or it'll be under like my latest videos having been released yesterday some lovely english countryside in dorset some phenomenal vehicles had a great day so uh, yeah all good all good um, well, I'm going to carry on with this because it's going to take a little while I'll need to go over and get the JCB fast track that they've uh, very kindly loaned us and the bale trailer because once we've got this is where I'm a little bit how does cotton work because if I do this entire field and find I've got cotton left in the baler I can't actually get that out so how much do they actually require to fulfill the contracts that's a bit of a worrying one i've always kind of had enough to fulfill them when i did contracts in ravenport a few bushes in cab that's always helpful just hoping missing these few little bits out isn't going to be too detrimental but we'll see so yeah so like i say i'm going to carry on round and then we'll uh we'll go and get the uh, jcb We'll get that done and uh, get some more money in the bank and hopefully we'll get to a point we can get some more machinery but I may I may like to say I may decide if I hit another tree I think I'm gonna scream I think I may have to just increase the loan as well I'm more than happy to put the time in to do uh, contracts to get it but I could be on episode 10 before I even get enough money to buy a baler so I've left a worker on the case for the moment. On the case? On the job. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, I thought I'd come back and get the trailer with the JCB, which will get me there a little bit quicker. And I can go this route this time, avoiding pedestrians. So I'm, I'm thinking now, where are, where are all the cheap round balers? Remember on FS17 and Square Bailers, there were a whole load of, you know, there was the Massey Ferguson one, there was a, there was a Kroner big baler, um, which was like 12 grand to buy, like a second hand type situation. Um, so I could get myself a baler and I can bail the field I did in the last episode. I can go and buy a header and I can cut all of this and start building up some silage, which might not be a bad idea because then I can sell the silage and get some more money in the bank. Maybe I'll do that, mow all that. But it needs collecting. Uh, where was I going? Right to the end through the woods, wasn't I? Yeah, because that takes me back the other way. Um, so yeah, maybe I'll do that next. I'm thinking I'll do some mowing, but it's going to cost me 15 grand, I think, to get the header for that mower. 
which again you've got to speculate to accumulate really I'm going to need it just down this track here I just had a message sent to me and it's brilliant I love I love the fact um, after my Rhymers Rally video there was a little old green uh, field marshal and I did a tiny little bit of footage and it was sitting there just running with the engine ticking over now I think there's a reason for that and that's because the starting of those old uh, field marshals required it was it was quite a complicated starting system so I think and sometimes you have to have a cartridge starter and those those types of things um, so once it was up and running I guess you don't want to turn it off because then you've got to then go through that entire process up oh, I just had a message from a guy uh, saying that that tractor belongs to his uncle um, which I think is absolutely fantastic um, where are we just need to find the message now a guy called Will and it says the field marshal that you filmed is my uncle's it was made in 1947 which I think makes it a series one and was used on our sawmill local to the area where we were in the, the uh, tractor rally in a place called Verwood that's just it's amazing I think it's absolutely fantastic that I got that I got a comment back so thank you Will thanks for that I don't know if you're going to watch any more of my videos but um, an old series one field marshal wow Right, what I'm going to do... Actually, I've probably come on the wrong side, haven't I? Let's spin this round. Because the worker's working across the other side. So I was trying to get it kind of tidied at least into a... a shape that a worker could work on without it being too complicated. And I think we're starting to get there. Whether we're going to get two full bales off this? That's my big concern. I don't know if we are. don't think it's ready to drop a bale yet. I can tell anyway. I'm blown away by that message. I think that's absolutely fantastic. Right. Stop that there. I was only had to work on it while I was uh, going to do that. That's what we'll do. Let's tidy up that bit over here right so I'm going to continue now till I get my first full bale and then we'll get the rest of the field tied up like I said at the, on the first episode I don't want I don't want the episodes on the pinky to be um, like 50 minutes long kind of thing and having said that my first one was 40 something wasn't it so it wasn't as short as I'd hoped it was going to be um, so I whizzed around the other side because I realised I left a bit Rather untidily. Turn it off. Yeah, round two. So, I will see in a little while. When we've got this done, we'll see how we are for time and finances, and I may well get that header and start cutting the grass on our grass field, which is field. Can't quite see it on here. Field 40. That's something as well. Starting a new map, new let's plays, getting used to the field numbers and where they all are now. And there we have it, our first bale. Now I'm seriously concerned that I'm not going to have uh, enough to get a second. Which means we may have to do something slightly dodgy, which I don't like doing, but... Hmm, we'll see how it pans out. What I'll do now, rather than go side to side, is we'll go down the length. Just trying to tidy up this end as well. So now we've got a kind of... Is it a rhombus? It's not trapezoid. Uh, that was it. Oh, actually, you know what? Sorry. Uh, mathematical geometry, that kind of thing. I think it might be a parallelogram. 
Just thinking, because the other end runs the same direction as this, so... Probably. So I think the thing to do now is to pick this one up. First it will get out of the way, the harvest are coming back up again. Take it to the spinnery, but and then I can see what this gives me for how far through the contract is kind of completed. Because if it only says like 50%, I know I need to get at least in a whole nother bale. Which could be an issue. So... Off we go. Spinnery it is. He says, following no particular route. I think we need to get back to the main road, then head. Oh, it's just in the town, isn't it, Spinnery? Just as I thought. So we should be right just following this next turn in right into town. Whoa. There we go. Because I am curious. Door pillars just in the way both sides can't see if there's any traffic but I just have to take a chance and we are here aren't we it's going to be interesting okay it's going to test my reversing skills isn't it transpires aren't actually too bad apart from that never mind right let's unload how much does this say can't see 68 percent transported hmm that's going to be interesting, then, isn't it? Which means I need part of another bale, which isn't going to work, is it? Oh dear. <laughs> oh well, I have to see how this is going to pan out then. Okay, let's go. And here now lies my dilemma. Um, we are on the last strip of cotton in this field and I've only got just over 10,000 litres in the back, which means I don't have a full bale to unload, which means technically I can't fulfil the contract. Even if I drive the cotton baler to the spinnery and sit over the sell point. So, there is a solution if you find yourself in this situation not everyone's going to like it but anyway <laughs> so what I'll do is once I finish this strip we're going to head to I've got to remember where I put it now I have put something on the map which I did when I set it all up for various different reasons and you know the contract with um, Jeremy, Ben and Elise is one very good reason why this it's, it's one of the silos, uh, the buy anything silos. They come in very handy for doing let's plays and narratives and subscriber contracts and those kind of things. They may well help in this situation. Because that's it, field complete. 
And if we look on here, that says 98%, I just need to deliver the cotton to the spinnery, which I can't do. <laughs> I can't empty a part bale, um, which is kind of a problem. So what I'm going to do is, like I said, I'm going to drive to the BGA. I think that's where I put the... Uh, I put one of the bionithin silos. Now, you may already know, if, uh, if you've done this before, exactly what I'm going to do now. It's a bit dicey, but it's the only real way I'm going to be able to get around this. Um, but don't worry, I will not do anything beyond what is necessary to fulfil this contract. So I'm going to see the biogas in a second, and I'll show you what I mean. I am now heading back up to the farm. Having gone to the biogas plant, I am now overcoming uh, certain issues that, which I hadn't foreseen. Uh, one, that the silo that I had placed, which I placed at the biogas plant, uh, is fine. Because it was there, it was out of the way, and if I needed to, for whatever particular reason, it was there. However, the cotton harvest was too wide to get through the gates at the biogas plant. So I've had to, and the money's gone down again now, I had to sell the silo there and place a new one. And I've had to place it at the main farm because it was the only way I could do this. Um, otherwise it means losing out on that contract. Which the problem now is, it's just I've just lost five grand anyway, so the five grand I gained from the contract is kind of irrelevant. But potentially, I don't know, we'll see how this works out. So here's what happens with the buy anything silo and I've had to put it there because it was too close to the barn and whatever interestingly enough if you have the cotton harvester um, you can actually fill with cotton so because we've only got 10,000 litres to get a full bale I need 10,000 litres and this is going to cost me more money again so I can actually fill with cotton so if I do that and it stops that's just cost me 13 grand. <laughs> I hope this works out. Um, now what was happening, and this is where things get a little bit peculiar, is if I now unload this, now I'm not quite sure what happened a second ago, this is what happens and it's weird and it didn't do it initially and I thought something had gone wrong. Firstly, it showed that it had unloaded a bale, but there was no bale on the ground. Um, then it said that it was on zero, but then I had a floating bale, which, you know, it's obviously still happening. I thought that had been fixed, but... Um, so I saved the game, came out, came back in again, and here's what happens. If you go to this silo here, one of these buy anything silos, and you can put cotton into your cotton harvester. Now, I just did it to top up to get to 20,000 litres. So I've got a full bale that I can unload and I can take to the spinnery, which means I can fulfil the contract. Now, unfortunately, that cost me 13 and a half grand. I don't know if I'm going to make that back, but here's the thing that happens. Weirdly, if you top up or fill up a cotton baler at one of these, when you unload, it unloads two. It spawns two out normally what happens is one unloads and the next one suddenly pops into existence in the back and you get two bales for what you just paid out for one which is a bit peculiar i don't know why it does that now one of these i'm going to put to one side because that has got nothing to do with the contract and if anything it's kind of been gained by nefarious means so i'm not going to be sort of cheating and putting that money in i'm going to put that in a barn somewhere out the way uh and at some point I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with that at the moment. I mean, I could just take it, sell it, and say, you know what, it doesn't matter. I've got two bales. I'm going to take the money from it. But it's a little bit, you know, I might change my mind if, if this gets a little bit trickier to do. So, yeah, uh, odd one, really, really odd one. I've brought the JCB back over. Um, so I need to take at least one of these to the sell point. Now, if I take this to the spinnery now, I don't know whether or not it's going to take what it needs for the contract and then it will pay me for the excess, or it will just take the bail and say, contract complete. If it does that, then what I might need to do is take the other one anyway, sell it, because I'm going to need the money to cover what it costs me to top up the cotton, if that makes sense. It's 
kind of all gone a bit it's all gone a bit Pete Tong but anyway let's take this and we'll see what happens because as it stands at the moment I don't know what's going to happen in the realms of what should happen compared to what does actually happen in the game they're often completely different things uh, you know and that's always you know it kind of makes me smile I get a lot of comments people message me and say you know you should have done this or you should have done that or when I did it this happened or when I did it that happened and you stop and you think and that you know absolutely but weirdly that those things don't always happen for everybody and it can depend on the map it can depend on so many different factors that it's almost impossible to tell now what is actually going to happen let's move right over let them go past and let's see hopefully it will take what it needs and then pay me for the rest which will be great I've got a funny finish it's going to take the bail and say thank you very much contract complete kind of thing it's where I think we're going to end up going I'm trying not to knock their bins over but also fully aware this guy's walking past and I don't want to run anywhere else over. Just try if I can. To tidy that up a bit. There we go. So. Let's do that. And that. And let's see what happens. Contract on field 32 finished. So bearing in mind, I was already 68% into the contract with the first bale, which means I only needed 32%, which wasn't anywhere near a full bale, to complete that contract. So it's now taken a 20,000 litre bale, and unlike normally, if you've got excess crop, it will take what it needs for the contract, then you get paid for the excess crop with the cotton. Hasn't done that. So I'm technically now 13 and a half grand in the hole, to fulfil a contract which I made five grand on. So, my advice would be um, don't bother with cotton contracts. Normally they work fine, that's so annoying. Uh, so that's now complete. I get 5,757. <laughs> oh, dearie me. Oh, I've completed the contract, haven't I? Which means all the machinery goes. I should have waited till I got back. Now I've got to walk. And it also means I've got a cotton bale. I can't shift. Nice one, Mr. City P. Good thinking. Planning ahead. Always the best way to go about things. I don't even think I've got a front load of forks. I don't even think I've got a weight big enough to be able to shift that bale. Oh... that was great so yeah I started off the episode on about 54 grand after the contracts I did uh, was supposed to make another five and a half and ended up being down by nine so uh, yeah well done well done you <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is head back to the farm and contemplate my uh, failures for today um, and I know it, I know I'm going to get loads of comments saying I should have done this, I should have done that and you know, yeah, it's, it's very easy to second guess various different aspects, I should never have taken the cotton contract in the first place, I should, you know there are so many things that I should have done um, that was supposed to work and had I thought ahead, I wouldn't have taken the stuff back yet, I could have used it to move that cotton bale and all would have been well in the world. So, with that being said, I now need to load more uh, contracts for local people. Oh, someone did ask me, say to me the other day, did message and say about bailing this, why aren't you using the bales you start with? You don't start with any bales that I'm aware of. 
all the bales here, they're all just for show. I don't think that you can actually do anything with them that I'm aware of. Uh, I don't think you can, anyway. I will double check that. So what I've got to try and do now is shift a cotton bale just by sheer brute strength and ignorance. If I can just shove it against the wall over there out of the way, that'd be fine. Now if this is a kind of warts and all, almost behind the scenes let's play too now, because it's the kind of... Gives you... Oh no, it's not going anywhere, is it? I thought it might... No. The amazing climbing fabric. Yeah, because obviously using things like the buy anything silo, that stuff that if I do use things like that, it's off camera. It's to, to do contracts and to you know take payments and make payments and that kind of stuff um so that's the sort of stuff you don't normally see i don't normally you know the people use them in the let's plays all the time um i just normally it's not something you would see on camera so yeah okay well i need forks i need help i need to lie down and i need to do a load more contracts to uh, earn my money back before i can even think about a bailer or buying the mower attachment or anything like that. I think maybe that's the next step. Buy that mower, mow field 40, get some silage in the bunker silo and sell a load of silage. I need to make some money. Um, and I think that's probably going to be the best way to do that. Although I might need to lease a slightly larger trailer if I'm going to be moving silage. I don't want to be doing 10,000 litres at a time, do I? Anyway. There we go. Uh, that's the end of this episode. Um, not quite how I thought it was going to go. Um, certainly probably not how you thought it was going to go. Let's see what happens in the next one. Um, we've got to move forward. We need to make money. These are the trials and tribulations that we come across. Like I say, uh, I could have edited the whole lot out and thought, you know what, I'm going to start again not show anybody what happened then. But that's not the point. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have, give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.